So when do I rest? What do I train? When do I go out climbing? When should I do what? Well, let me explain. First rule and most important is if you can go out. Oh, that's missing a comma. If you can, comma, go out. What I mean is everything that I'm saying here, please, if you can just go have fun and go outdoors climbing and go in your gym and climb, just go have fun and go climb. The best training for climbing is climbing. Hello and welcome back to my channel. So I have had a lot of people asking me to explain how I train, how I plan my schedule and how I concise everything. So I went to Instagram and made an inquiry. Turns out everybody that voted did want me to do a training video. Then I asked if they want a long or a series. Apparently they want a series of videos. Lastly, I'd asked the language and even though almost everybody that has asked me was Portuguese, basically all of them wanted it in English. So here we are today for a training day. This will be the first of many training videos in the series of quarantine. If you hear noises or people talking or anything of the sort, please ignore it. We're quarantining at the moment, we can't really leave our houses and I have a big loving family who tends to be quite loud, just like I am. Well, the whole idea or what I've learned from my years of climbing, training with different types of people and at some points in my life I did have coaches, is that you want to implement antagonists, upper body core, lower body flexibility, mobility and other subtopics of the sort. I'm focusing on, I'm focusing on these ones mainly today and um, for me personally, but this depends on who you are and what you feel like doing, uh, I like to do antagonists three times a week, upper body two times, lower body two times, core around three times, and flexibility all the time. All the time. By that, I don't mean every single day, if you don't have time. What I mean with all the times, I try to do mobility and flexibility exercises as I warm up, as well as I like to do when I cool down. I have recently started doing some morning flexibility and yoga because I do think that it's important as it gives you, as it helps you reduce tension and gain extra mobility for when you're at the, when you're projecting and you need a foot right by your hand. I mean, you're not gonna get there if you don't practice your flexibility. Now, antagonists three times a week means I have to put them in somewhere, either on active rest days or at the end of the climbing session. Upper body, lower body and core are kind of a complicated matter because I say three times. But in reality, what ends up happening is I'm going to choose four days of the week that I'm training. Those do not have to be the same days I'm climbing since you can switch them around. But, but when I do train, which will be those four days, okay, say it's these four days, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday, I might do upper body with core on Monday, so it's already one of each tick. Wednesday, I do core with lower body, that's another there. Thursday, I do some upper body with some that's the way over there and then Saturday I do a lower body you get the point I might have three core days where I mix them with lower and upper body right by upper body I mean anything that helps any of your upper body from fingerboarding to lock off training to pull ups to push ups you know First rule and most important is if you can go out. Oh, that's missing a comma. If you can, comma, go out. What I mean is everything that I'm saying here, please, if you can just go have fun and go outdoors climbing and go to your gym and climb, just go have fun and go climb. The best training for climbing is climbing. However, say that's not the matter in this case. Well, I'm doing four days a week. If you're a beginner, please do not do more than a day or two a week. This is just what I do 
and this fits me at the moment, it might change, it might stay the same in a few years, who knows, but be careful and be sensible. Well, this is how I train. Disclaimer. I am not a coach, I am merely, I am merely making this video to explain to you guys how I train, what I do, and, well, give you some tips and tricks. Now, one other important thing is to note for my training, I tend to base the intensity of my training around my mental cycle because as a woman, it is something that really does influence how I'm feeling mentally and physically. So, at the moment, since I am on a bit of a lower energy week where I feel a bit more clumsy, a bit more out of the place. Cool. So this week, for example, I need I needed to be a bit light. But that's not always the case. I sometimes have a really strong week. And when I know I'm having a strong week, I tend to really get those intense exercises going. I also have a little tip, which not everybody has to agree on. But I personally feel like on my lower energy weeks where I feel a bit off like this week, I actually use them for some light endurance. Not power endurance, just some light endurance. Anyways, anyways, we will be starting with some push-up pull-up warm-ups. Where for a beginner who is still not able to do push-ups or pull-ups properly, you use your knees. For the pull-ups, you use a resistance band. If you're more of an inter intermediate level, I would say stick to doing five of each. And if you're well, an expert, you probably already do this exercise by now. And you probably don't want my opinion, but if you're watching this, try 10-10. Maybe go 15-15 if you're not much of a beast. I do five pull-ups followed by five push-ups. And I do this for a total of five minutes. Where, before you finish each minute, you have to have done it. Meaning, you start your timer, which is going from zero to five minutes. Before the timer reaches minute one, you must have done the five push-ups and five pull-ups. I usually do them straight and use the rest of the time I have to rest. Once my timer reaches minute number one, then I have to do the next five, five, so on, so on, until I reach my five minutes. Then, after that, I rest five minutes, and I go to fingerboarding where I will be fingerboard with some weights added. If you're a beginner climbing and do not recommend fingerboard at all unless you really cannot climb outdoors or in, in that case, you're more than welcome to get a fingerboard, but please only use your body weight or use a pulley system to take some weight off your hands. Um, in the meantime, I myself will be showing you how I do my fingerboarding for today's light session. I will be doing some sort of endurance. I will be having a set of eight kilos added to me in hang for total of seven seconds in three seconds out do this for one minute then rest three minutes and go back to doing it i'm gonna do five sets of those in each set i'm gonna increase my weight for two kilos so the first set i do is gonna be eight second 10 kilos third set 12 then fourth 14 in the last one 16 kilos Then we move on to our pinch training. For those who are beginners, please do not do pinch training. You do not need it, you need to climb. So ignore this if you're a beginner. Everybody else, if you're an expert, you probably are just having a laugh listening to me explaining this, but everyone else, for pinch training today, I will be holding on to a pinch block that my lovely friend Mario, I'll link his YouTube channel below, has provided me with and I use it with the max weight I can hold on it with. I do it for 10 seconds, then I switch hands, 10 seconds, and I rest three minutes. Then I repeat. Do five sets of those, and then rest again, and then we go to our lock off training. For lock off training, I recommend beginners to be very careful and probably not to do the exercise I'm about to do. Instead, do what we call typewriting, where you basically do a pull up right with the bar under your chin, 
you move to the right, you lower slightly, you move up again, you go to the other, you go low again and up again. Right? That's a typewriter. And you can try it out with the resistant band. Once you're able to do it with the resistant band, uh, you can try doing it without. And once you're comfortable with this typewriter exercise, then you're more than welcome to try the exercise I'm doing today. After all this, I do recommend you do some stretching to cool down and before this, please do a proper mobility warm-up. 